Planning's at eight. Planning's at eight. Tony was oh, a bit. Oh, planning's eight. Sorry, obviously. So we're ready to get through this an hour, do you? Yeah. Well, it does say eight or whenever planning, whenever finance finishes. So we will. Um, right. I'm just gonna. Right. Okay, Moya. Sorry. Yes, recording. I am. I guess it's the last time. The next time it will be Sharon to do it. <laughs> yeah, you're real me. Anyway, item one is submissions from the public. If you've got a submission from the public, you put your hand up. Yeah. Nothing from the public. So we'll move on to item two, which is apologies for absence. Councillor Terry Collins. And there's no further ones. So item three is declaration by members under the Local Government Act 1972. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Item four is announcements by Chair. I was going to say two things, um, or just a few things. Um, first of all, obviously at the beginning of the month, the sad news about the passing of the Duke of Edinburgh Airport is um, very good the way the uh, town council sort of staff followed all the protocols and everything and um, you know led with what was going on nationally which is uh, a great thing to see and um, was what well, great thing to see in terms of what it was obviously a very sad event but um, how it's uh, led respectively in the local area was very good and um, just a shame that local condolence books can be open to things like that. Um, I did want to say a few words on the Finance Committee report. Um, obviously, this is the last Finance Committee of this council year, and it's been a very difficult council year. Um, notably, the drastic reduction of by 60% in our budgets across the board for income, um, where we went from 136,680 at the beginning to 54,000. We've obviously been able to secure local government uh, local funding for local government support of over 40,000, and we've outperformed our low uh, reduced income budget this year by 10,500 at the time of the latest evidence. And obviously, um, the precepts 87% of our income is by the precepts, and the town council for this calendar year, decided to all this council year, has now obviously decided to freeze up this year. Um, our expenditures have been well below budgets and kept well control. I think it's very good in all hands of more committee to help out on a steady course in a very difficult financial situation. Um, and as I've mentioned, we, we've updated the five-year board plan, which has included a freeze on the council, ta the council tax precepts for this um, But considering the hard year it has been, um, what we've been able to do from all our committees and all our councils is very good because the financial prospects still looks right for next year and the year beyond. Um, so I think everybody on town council, um, regardless whether the finance committee or the planning committee or the youth budget committee, committee or just on board council, kind of deserves a bit of power back. Uh, we've been through a very hard year and um, we've got out the other end of it and uh, hopefully things will start to turn back and get back to normal. So as a finance chair, thank you for being here. Um, so, 
Item 5 is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 3rd February 2021 as a correct record. Is there any proposed minutes? Thank you for proposing. John Ash seconding. All those in favour? That's mm -hmm. unanimous. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Yes, please. 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 Yes, Oh, what do you mean today's day? I thought you meant the yeah. meetings in February, so... <laughs> that was one more day, so today. Is to do with any matters arising from the meeting held on the third of the principles or not that else on the agenda. If you have any. Okay. Item seven is to do with matters of, and correspondence referring to the work within the scope of the finance committee and item seven point one is the adoption of a separate fuel card usage terms and conditions which is in the agenda pack. So I see we just got the dockets then. Sure. Yeah, we used to have a joint debit and fuel card policy, but if you remember, we updated the debit card policy because it's now the charge card policy, so we need to separate the fuel card usage policy out, so it's got the, um, and the weekly mileage sheet as well that you can see in the back of it with the personal mileage and that. Okay, I think item three is the main addition, isn't it? Yeah. So that was to basically address previous concerns. Yeah, yeah. it was indeed. So do we have a proposal for accepting this then? No, Mike is proposing, John is seconding. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Indeed. I think I might take a bit of advice though, Rachel, actually, to move 8.44 with. Yeah. And do 8.4 first. So, could I have a proposal, please, for moving 8.4 to after item 7, so we can just look at all four higher charges while all is here? Yes, thank you. Michael's proposed that, John second to get. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you. So we'll cover item 8.4 now and then we can rest the agenda. Uh, Paul Coatley, um, as you're all aware, is second to pick up Paul Coatley's on the as well. So, uh, long story short, two of the uh, courts, two of the three tennis courts, have now been marked out for pickleball. Uh, one tennis court accommodates them uh, to pickleball courts. Uh, and there's a picture on the report um, for you to see. Um, so now, uh, now the courts have been permanently marked, the office has been working with the uh, physical staff, um, and we've decided the best way forward is to have two dedicated pickle, uh, pickleball courts 
uh, Monday to Friday between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. And one dedicated tennis court, which is on the third court. The middle court, which will accommodate both tennis and pickleball, um, is open to either tennis or pickleball on a first and first serve basis. And um, we've been working um, on this system for a, a few weeks now, and it seems to be uh, working really well. The problem that we had is this was brought in last year, um, uh, the pickleball usage, um, and uh, higher charges um, weren't um, adjusted at that point because we were just seeing how it all worked out. So moving forward, um, at the moment, two pickleball uh, courts are cost the same as one tennis court. So if someone uses a pickleball court, they have to pay for the whole tennis court, and it, it's just a, a really fancy system. So um, um, I spoke to Paul, and Sharon uh, was also in contact before, and um, the new proposal is to, to bring in uh, an hourly rate per pickleball court of two pounds an hour. I mean, generally, both courts are hired out. It's very rare that we just have one hired out. Um, but it would just make things a lot easier to um, administer and also for the hirers so that they actually know how much they, they will be paying. So just changing it from £3.65 per hour for one tennis court, whether you're booking one or two pickleball courts, and moving that to £2 per hour per pickleball court. It's fairly uh, straightforward. Any questions, Rachel? Michael? Yes. How would people pay for this? Either by cash today or a bank. Oh, it's next to be cash. Um, we're working on this because of uh, uh, some bank payments, when it was done by bank payments, uh, we couldn't identify who paid what and we didn't know the amounts that they paid. So temporarily, for, uh, for now, um, uh, the, a lot of the one-off bits are paid in cash um, in envelopes that they bring um, and the, the envelopes are filled up and given to um, the due to leisure system so that nobody is actually hand, hand, handling the cash and we have got um, health and safety uh, and COVID procedures in place for that. I imagine generally they just need to make it with the cash is quite awkward. Yeah. Two pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a lot easier to what what can we set up a um, uh, card payment scenario? We, uh, it's it's basically we could, but then we will have card costs linked to it. I mean we, we have we have got a Barclays card um you know, facility at the moment in the main office, but there are charges associated with it. So just at the moment, this is what we're doing for now. I mean, uh, Dan and I were talking about this earlier today, and that might be something that we look at as we move forward. Well, I can I'll give you a couple of card transaction companies, which are a lot cheaper than barges, and a lot cheaper than your pay and the others. Um, the, the one that we're using, that, that, uh, yeah, it would, uh, the, um, yeah, any, anything, I mean, we are paying for lower rates because the Barclays card system that we're using at the moment, we secured after you um, recommended someone to us, okay. so we're still on that tariff and apparently it, it is very, very good. I'll send you some details, Rachel, alright? Okay. Right. Any okay. comments for people on the line? No, nope. uh, we're, we're certainly content with that, the, the, the pickleball community, it would make it a lot easier. I mean, people are prepared to pay by bank transfer, and it might be easier to tie the payments together if it's individual courts where they're booked by separate people. <coughs> but we're happy to go along with whatever we can cancel. I mean, we're still developing this, aren't we, Paul? It's a Yes, no, we're happy to work with you, as, as we've said before. John? 
Don. Um, a couple of things. First of all, I uh, could ask Paul a question. How much do you pay at the leisure centre per hour? Uh, I have to confess I, I don't have that offhand because it's a long time since we played there, but... Considerably more than two pounds, I would imagine. I feel sure it's more than two pounds, so we have to book the hall. We don't we don't book, well, we, you can book individual courts, um, but I'd need, to, I'd need to check just to know how much that is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I've got no, I've got no argument about you having it for two quid an hour, but for eight people, that's 25p for an hour's entertainment. No, 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 sorry. So yes. we play a game of pool, we put a pound in for a game of pool, which lasts you 10 minutes <laughs> for two. Right. Anyway, I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying I hope you realise what a bargain you're getting. No, you, you've not understood, John, because basically one tennis court is hosting two pickleball courts. So we're actually playing, each court plays on half a tennis court. So you're presently charging 365 for a tennis oh, court. Oh, I see. Sorry, so it's £2 for four people. So yeah. effectively, you, effectively, you'd be getting £4 instead of 365 Right. Well, we're, we're in profit then, I'm all right. I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all, in, it's all in tennis. It, it, yeah. yeah. Okay, Paul, that's fine. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Any further comments from Francis? Your comment, if I may, Chairman, I think we need to keep an eye on this to make sure that we don't get the situation where tennis players are never able to get there because of all those football players. Or vice versa. Mm -hmm. I think we need to make sure simple balance is achieved. That's why that one of the courts will be dedicated to tennis, one for pickleball, Monday to Friday during the day, and then the middle court is first come, first serve. So yeah, we will we will keep an eye on that definitely. Tennis is the place to have and when you get good with them on, yeah. Yeah, we tend to get a flurry for those few yeah. weeks, but yeah. Right, so is anybody happy to propose the adjustment to the higher charge? Looks like John is proposing exactly by two or Harrington. Can you just be ready for the table? All those in favour? Before I leave, can I just say how grateful we are that you've uh, supported the sport and put such a great facility for us at the Jubilee Centre. We, we, you know, we really are very appreciative. And I think you'll find as we go forward, there's going to be an exponential growth in the sport and it will be great for local residents because although our community is sort of, you know, retired people, there's no reason that the sport can't be played, and it is played by younger people, and particularly families. And, and we, we intend to support the, the council in promoting the sport to you know, local residents. So we're not here just for ourselves. Thank you, Paul. It's very big in Spain. Um, I think you know that, Paul. Yes, and it's very big in Spain. It's the fastest growing sport in the States and it's, it's going to, I think it'll, it'll pick up here. We've already got a lot of um, leisure hotels are doing it. Um, Centre parks now have it as a standard sport in all their sites. So it, it really is going to come on once people get to hear of the sport. But, but again, you know, thank you very much to the council for backing us. Welcome. You're welcome. You're more than welcome to continue your speech. I mean, if you'd like. So if you want to enjoy your evening, have a nice evening. <laughs> okay. So next on item eight is item eight point one, which is the 2020-2021 income and expenditure budget report. So. Um, I'll, I'll try and get through this as quick as I can. Uh, the mayor's charity, which uh, Sharon has advised to Tony, has raised four thousand four hundred four pounds today. So that will be distributed when we do have the uh, Town Assembly or AGM, or possibly in June. Um, the uh, 2021 total income compares really well with last year, uh, the 2019 campaign income levels. Um, 
just with a, a slight difference of uh, 65 and a half thousand, um, which um, um, uh, is a drop uh, on the uh, from the uh, activity centres income. Um, which, bearing in mind where we uh, where we thought we'd be, I think that's a, a, a pretty sort of strong performance. So, um, as, uh, as Ben mentioned earlier, the uh, current income has been great, greatly supported by uh, COVID grant aid uh, from uh, South Gloss. Um, so far, uh, on the report that you've got, uh, it, it's amounted to just over £50,000. Uh, funnily enough, this week, um, we've been given another 4200 and I've just applied for uh, further funding uh, as well. So the actual funding for 2020-21 is just under 55000 which nearly covers the income drop that we've had on the site. So um, that has worked out rather well. Uh, the actual performance figures of the individual activity centres is shown on the uh, uh, table uh, midway down the page. Um, so the total income from the site um, 71,500 uh, against the expected 53,000 that we budgeted for after uh, reducing the budget drastically in June. Um, so I, I think bearing in mind where we come from, what we were expecting and what actually been achieved, um, it, it, it is a very, very strong performance. Um, and I, can I just say, um, not all local authorities have passed money down to parish and town councils across the country. So much luck. Yeah, we are. They were. I only realised that when there was discussion on the council clerks group a week or two ago. Um, That's because you have got a conservative controlled South Gloss council, isn't it? Absolutely, John. They were encouraged to pass it down, but. They, they didn't have to. Yeah. And just yeah. because I read out in the beginning, we're compiled on the 20th of February, so these obviously are updated since what I did at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been getting grant aid through all the time, and funnily enough, um, it, it was the new opening grant aid. Uh, we tried to apply for it, and there was no facility there for Town and Parish Council. So, we actually contacted them, and that's when um, I think Sharon was part of the time you went out to the uh, Town and Parish Forum. And we then discovered that some around the country weren't getting anything. Um, and uh, following um, us asking the question, and I'm sure that others uh, in the area were as well, uh, they reinstated the discretionary grant. Um, just for town and or to accommodate charities in town and parish councils, um, you know, sort of um, linked to the reopening of facilities after the lockdown, particularly for the leisure industry. So uh, we have got a bit more coming. Um, <coughs> I, I don't think it, it's huge amounts, but we're also due um, a few more thousand pounds um, for the period going through March as well. Um, I can't confirm it because you just cannot speak to the grant department at first law. Um, they're so busy, they haven't got a direct line and, and it takes them a few weeks to reply to any email. So, But that has been an absolute lifesaver and a real support for the, the community. So overall, income has outperformed expectations. Um, at the point of writing this as well, we were waiting for sort of further income to come through. The CCLA dividend uh, that we haven't received, that's just been confirmed. So uh, that's another £555 that will be going into the income level. So the next report will actually contain the finalised pre audit figures. So uh, depending on um, you know, for what's happening with meetings, then I might issue uh, uh, an interim report just so that councillors know uh, where we stand ahead of um, me going in and, and setting the statement of account for the audit. Um, so, 
So as Ben also uh, mentioned, we've greatly reduced the high charge budget um, uh, in 2020-21 and we carried that forward uh, into the 21-22 um, forward plan as well because we didn't know um, whether we'd be opening up or what would be happening. Um, so I come to it later on in the report. I think bearing in mind that the we've outperformed the budget level so much with the uh, during uh, the last financial year it's worth increasing those budgets to match the income levels that we've actually received because touch wood we've probably come from a worst case scenario situation and the year ahead will be better so um so that will come a little bit later um, so that side looks very good. The, the expenditure side, again, has, uh, is well below budget. Uh, you have got graphs um, in your report, if you want just a, a quick view. Um, that one uh, shows, shows that it's blue as the budget and red as the expenditure. So that is a function of your report and shows that across the board we are well under budget um, and the actual figures are itemised in, in the table on page uh, two as well um, linked to that there's a further breakdown for um, the, the youth budgets um, if, if you wanted to sort of have a look at those as well um, the youth budget is, is 34,712 uh, pounds under spend um, for, the, for the last financial year, and that has gone into the year end surplus. It's not reallocated into you. Only the um, external grant aid um, that have, have, haven't been spent has carried forward. Everything else goes into the year end surplus. So, uh, based on that, we've only uh, spent uh, eight across the board uh, 81. 0.65% of our annual budget, which is a really good situation, bearing in mind that we still have running costs linked to close um, sites and things, and you know we still have to maintain a lot of our services um, through the lockdown. Uh, so based upon the current 2020-21 um, actual figures, and the current approved 2021-22 budget figures, um, which was correct as that uh, 19th state law, the current year-end surplus to carry forward for 2021-22 amounts to a massive 307.5 hundred thousand. So um, that is detailed within the fraud plan. Um, the large a large I say that it should read um, detailed within the budget board plan, plan schedule B. Yeah. yeah, so just in the year end circular part at the bottom, after the first paragraph, that should say schedule B. And um, similarly, on the next page at the top, it should say schedule B under the reallocation of the year end circular. Yeah. So, linked to this part, uh, the year end surplus, um, I'm going to deal with this in sort of three chunks really. Where we are now, uh, a reallocation of the year end surplus, and then the final part will be adjusting the higher uh, charge budget um, and a further reallocation of the year mark reserve. So, that's why you actually have three schedules uh, mark schedule B, C and D which is the summary of the forward plan which are these ones um, and that just shows you a snapshot summary for each section as we're going through so the current 2020-21 year end surplus is shown on schedule B and it, it shows at the bottom £307,526.72, which is huge. Uh, but as I 
as I started saying before, the large surplus was predicted, um, and it's due to the strong income overperformance and large expenditure underspend. Um, but last year, whilst um, I was uh, um, away, uh, the year-end surplus wasn't reallocated at that point. So there was 189,000 that normally would have been reallocated at year-end last year. It wasn't. It just carried forward. So that's why this level is so high. Um, good news for council and for the forward plan, uh, because we did have some projects um, in mind um, where we knew that, that the surplus would, would be high. Um, so, um, so looking at um, that, that year end surplus is 307, that's where it stands at the moment. So moving on to the next stage, it's reallocating it um, um, into earmark reserve and adjusting the forward plan slightly. So um, on page three, where we're moving forward, uh, this the reallocation of the year end surplus that is directly linked to schedule C, which is on the next. So basically, uh, what these schedules are is just a summary of the five-year forward plan so that you can see the impact of decisions, what it's having over the five-year period. So uh, in view of the large 2020-21 year end surplus, uh, the following budget changes are recommended for the 2021-22 um, budget. Some of the basic budget changes um, that are detailed on this page have already been included within uh, the previous schedule that we were looking at, but the major adjustments to the reserves is the main reallocation of the current predicted year end surplus. So on page three, going through, um, the Brookway development um, that uh, council uh, said that they wanted to look at, and I believe things are, are beginning to move on that. Uh, that was agreed in November 2020, subject to the year-end position. So, um, from the calculations that I've done, I've allocated 100,000 into that project, which was the amount that was um, discussed at the time in November. Uh, play areas, um, as you know, we've got the Bailey's Court uh, build um, uh, taking place. We have got grant aid coming in against that. So this is just an adjustment of figures. Um, so the adjustment will allow 71,000 to go towards the Bailey's Court play area with the difference made up from external grant funding. And that will leave 105,000 in reserve for future play area projects because I, um, I heard correctly a few months ago there may be another one coming up um, purely where a lot of uh, play areas have work um, put into Bradley State Lounge about the same time. Some of them are, are beginning to wear out a bit now. And then uh, the future budget reserve, um, 3089, that's just to support the five-year forward plan and to give council leeway to protect a huge prefect um, heights or drop uh, moving forward. So um, if, if council uh, were happy with that and happy with the um, schedule C, looking at the year-end surplus, um, that would reduce the year-end surplus at the... Um, for 2021 to just over 91,500 by reallocating this money. Um, at the same time, moving forward, as uh, things have developed, obviously to encompass the Bailey Court grant funding, um, it will be a case of increasing the uh, grant income um, from zero to 34,195. Um, uh, office rates, 
have the actual figures come in, so these are just uh, minimal adjustments. Uh, professional fees, that's increased slightly. That was agreed by the staffing committee um, to cover the contractor that's doing my work in the office that I can't get access to. She comes in for one day a week or one and a half days um, if it's around a meeting with uh, payment issues the following day. Um, and that was um, funded mainly from an end of from the, the prior year, where I took over a lot of the work early on. Um, the election costs uh, increased from 3000 to 12000 to, to cover the May by-election. We have asked the question, they don't know how much it will cost, so that is a guesstimate based on previous uh, by-elections, but it may be higher, it may be lower. Uh, all the youth grant aid, those are just um, external grants that have, were um, allocated to um, council over several years for specific youth items, and we haven't spent the money yet, so it's just a case of rolling it at year end. It's not a case of creating a, 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 new, um, uh, a new budget. Um, and one of them, um, the uh, nominal code 5512, there is an additional 10,000 that have been awarded as well. Uh, the rates for um, Jubilee, Brookway and Bailey's Court have been uh, slightly adjusted, linked to actual figures. And then we've got the, um, the grant aid for the uh, Bailey's Court pay area um, actually going into planned project. So um, this is just to the main part is to reallocate that this large year end surplus um, and, and just to substantiate and strengthen the forward plan. Um, and at the bottom of the, the page, just to make it clear, that shows the year end by, if, if this was approved, the year end position going through the year um, to 25-26, which does show us a really, really good position. So I don't know, Ben, do you want to consider those for approval and then we'll move on to the next one? Well, Tony had a question mm -hmm. and I just want yeah. to be able to sort questions as well so we can form a bit of key. So got one as well. Tony, Michael and no one on the line. Okay. Yeah. On your um, trial period of ballot, they're all saying page one, but it comes in the multiple, but anyway. Sorry, which one? On your period, period trial balance. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit confused on the VAT side. You've got VAT on receipt, VAT on payment, and the VAT reclaim being 13 pence, 13 pence. Yeah, we haven't quite, we haven't finalised the, the VAT yet. So, um, what that thirteen pounds thirteen is? Funny enough, I was talking to Terry today, and we're going to be working on this next Wednesday. That thirteen pounds thirteen was a manual adjustment made at, at, in December last year because there is a discrepancy, um, a slight discrepancy within the with that adjustment. So. Can I, can I finish what I'm going to say before you okay. jump in? Um, I'm, I'm just a bit confused here with this being VAT on receipt, VAT on paper. Um, if you've got VAT on receipt and you've got your VAT on payment, yeah. shouldn't you have a VAT reclaim somewhere? We will do when we process it, but um, obviously this is for the year round and we've been waiting for final year round invoices uh, to come in and to be processed, which will then adjust this figure further. So that's what I'm saying. This will be done next Wednesday, which is the bit yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. and then it will be a replay. Yeah. You're nearly 11,000 on day. Um, nearly 10,700. Yeah, and, and it will be reclaimed. Um, however, um, do, do we not reclaim our VAT monthly? No, quarterly. Yeah. Because of the quite large figures, would it not be better to do it monthly? 
Because um, it's better in our bank rather than the in our revenue bank. I could ask them, I mean, this is the agreement and to be up to tax that the, the, the back office set up, um, because, so, you know, we've got this long-standing agreement with them, so we would then have to get that agreement changed and, and see if they would consider monthly. It might be, to, might be worthwhile just to look at the cost, because with a, with a total um, income of uh, 800 more thousand banks, or over a million dollars, we should be looking at possibly monthly reclaims, because we're likely to be reclaiming more than what we're um, uh, having um, paying out. Possibly, yeah. I, I, I think it, it, would get, it, it might go in a seesaw effect, depending on how, we, how quickly the invoices are issued and how quickly the expenditure is posted. I think that's partly why it's done on a quarterly basis. Yeah, it, 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 but yeah, it's worth looking at. I'll, I'll, I will speak to yeah. them. Yeah, okay. I, I thought I'd just ask that question. Yeah. I, I know it's not it's not well and we don't normally have these uh, adjustments but um yeah but, um I'm only telling parish councils not to tax so I don't know. I will ask the question. It might well be that it has to be on a quarterly basis uh, under opt to tax because it is a specialised area. But uh, I will definitely ask the question. Yeah. I know when I had one business where I was exported, so therefore I was having to retrain more than what I was paying out. And we went on monthly retail. Yeah. It? Yeah. Because, because of that scenario. And it looks like we're in a similar situation. It's, it's purely because we have this arrangement because um, where we've opted to tax, um, a, a normal company can't do that. So by charging, because our higher income and our sites run at a lot, that's the whole point of it, because it's substantiated by the preset. Um, because of that, opting to tax makes sense, so that any build costs and things like this that might not necessarily be, you be able to claim back, we can. So I will definitely ask the question there. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. No, I'm very much. I've solved my problem. Is there anything else? <laughs> yeah, Rachel, I think there is a small typo on page one. Maybe you already know about this. In the table, the income against budget for Bailey score, to you've got one percent, it should be a hundred, right? Yeah. Yeah. Forget. Yeah. <laughs> Forget. Yeah. That, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I always put something in to get your profit. That's right. <laughs> Normally then, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> right, so you're asking us to consider whether we want to get the to see that each day. Yeah, so, so, so if we the things in the table yeah. then, do you? Yeah. yeah. So to reallocate the year-end surplus uh, within the, uh, the end of this year, so that our balance to carry forward will reduce to 91,500. Um, and then slight changes uh, based on more up-to-date information for the next year's budget. I mean, in, ge in general, I was quite interested in the idea of surplus because I know there was capital projects that we wanted to do that we were looking at funding them via the percentage of needs. So whether it was a public works loan or increasing pre steps or, or what have you. Um, it's either like end of year surplus could have actually potentially gone towards any of that stuff back. Um, I could look like, for example, the extra building and what have you. Yeah, but that's the 100,000 top one. Sorry, I have to. Yeah. One. So, what council decided to put away was to wait for 100,000. That, that was the um, book in November. Um, roughly 100,000 was the initial thought for a, a, a cost. Um, and to wait to get the year end surplus position to see whether that 100,000 could be covered. If it couldn't, then it would, we'd consider a public works loan. Yeah, sure. But 
um, or a change in the precepts. Um, so, but the year-end surplus it is sufficient to put 100,000 in at the moment. So, so that's why it has gone in there. So, and then the other big project was um, the Baylor's Court Play area. <clears throat> so we have uh, secured um, grant funding on that one. Uh, so that's just um, a, a adjusting the reserve to allow for that because to, to bump it up a, a bit back to its original level because, you know, ju just from the Baylor's Court Bay area, you can see that if one Bay area needs to be replaced, it can wipe out the whole whole reserve. So that was all that that has been mentioned. Those two items have been mentioned going through in previous finance before. That's fine. Thank you. Sorry, I overlooked that. So anyone? So, no, that was top. Sorry, that was top of my list. The Brookway one. Is anyone happy to go ahead with it? So it's the proposed the table on page three. Yeah. yeah. Anybody happy? I could propose it. One second. All those in favour? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll double check the Bayless Court grant funding on that one because I think this might have been done before um, I had the information. But yes, because I do. I think it's more than that because I've got the yeah. as well. I haven't really looked at fourteen thousand, so I think that was yeah. So I'll just adjust that figure linked to what um, has actually been um, provided. And you can turn on page four then, Rachel. Yeah, page four now. Sorry, I missed that. I think you're going on to page four now. Right, okay. So this is the, the final stage. So um, as previously said, um, the the income from the activity centres, uh, we carried forward the, the really flash income level. Um, but looking at the performance of income actually received, um, I think it would be an idea to restore um, the budgets for the year ahead to the income levels that we actually had or actually um, have achieved uh, from 2021. 20, 20, so in the table you can see the Jubilee Centre and uh, 22,000 current budget, slight increase to 23. Uh, Brookway 6,000 uh, increased to 7,300 and then the details column it's showing you what the actual income levels are for 2020-21 for um, and the big one uh, is Bailey's Court uh, we had a budget of 25,000 um, but we achieved 41,000 so there's a difference of 18,300 um, and I, I would suggest that that goes to the off-site refurbishment reserve because um, it was highlighted um, um, in the last financial year that that could be a bit on the low side when there was talk of possibly needing a new roof for Bailey's Court that was coming in over 100,000. So um, it's just increasing that, that from 110 up to 128,000 in next year forward plan and budget um, and then at the bottom again you can see the year-end balances moving forward over the five-year period based on the structure of the five-year forward plan that, that does assume a precept increase of 0.5 percent per annum um, each year all seem very sensible to me any questions on this one really? Anybody happy to propose what's on page four? John? Second by Franklin. All those in favour? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
dimensional. Um, you know, sort of, but, but I, from what you were saying earlier, then, just really quickly, that shows what a strong position helps Lauren. Um, yeah. You know, with the final, they're nearly finalised, most of the year end adjustments are in, so I, I think that looks really, really good. It's a nice position to be in, it's a nice position that they're able to do what you did um, precepts as well and do that. Yeah, and can I just comment that? A lot of parish and town councils across the country are in nowhere near such a robust position that we are. Yeah. It's, it's all with planning. Yeah. It's quite amazing really, because I mean most of the other town parish councils have had things like holiday lets and all those bits oh, and bobs yeah. and measure yeah. centres, yeah. which is a huge income loss for them. But we seem to have weathered it very well. Mm. Obviously we're not massively dependent really on that no. measure at sixty dollars. Anyway, is there anything else anybody wants to add to 8.1 or to move on to 8.2? Which is the 2020, 2020 and 2021 capacity switch spring packs. So the, uh, everything's itemised there. If you spot something, if you could refer to which account it is and the reference to the far left, then I'll, I'll, I'll know which ones you're clearing. Is that address we put in evening post or is it we're just buying evening post? No, we were buying it, but we stopped that. Oh yeah, we're getting into that. Yeah, yeah. But we stopped that now. That's if you look that's from last year, that was just catching up on some petty cash receipts that were around. But yeah, we stopped it in April. A bit of money that saves helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is anyone happy to replace these? Can no, I can I ask a question? Yeah, go on, John. Um, I'm just wondering why some of the dates seem so like a year ago. And the evening post, 13th of April. That seems an awful long time ago to me. Well, where has that receipt been hanging about? I mean, pinned on someone's wall or something? I think it was in the bottom of a the pet cash pin in the office, I think. Don't, don't the pet cash team get balanced? But there was there was a big gap because we didn't have staff in the office to um, to actually sort of balance it and um, well, we had a we had a lady we pursued, didn't we, Rachel? It won't happen yeah, she, and going forward, I assure you, we will keep yeah. much up to date on those ones. Yeah. Right. Okay, that was all. Thank you. Any further comments? I just going back a bit further as well. Just so just to ensure that all of the entries have been authorised, otherwise we'll be picked up some audit as well. Oh, good question. Sorry, what is the um, petty cash budget for that on the youth? It's got, it's now 300 quid. It's been topped up from 70 quid to 230 quid. Make it 300 quid. I, I, I think three, 300, 350, I'd have to look, it's in the financial reg, um, oh. is the limit. But why why is it gone up from seventy quid and it's been topped up by two hundred and thirty quid? It, it's been topped up because it started uh, sort of moving it again, um, and we we didn't expect the um, the the closure. Um, I wasn't actually involved uh, with that top up, but it it is at the allowable level um, because at the time that it was topped up. We would have expected, um, you know, sort of the youth side of things to be really opening up and moving forward, and expenditures to be coming out. 
I, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I've asked the question right because I've not seen to get an answer. My question is, why has it gone up from 70 quid to 300 quid? But it's you one you're talking about. It's uh, the petty cash or the you. Yeah, you one. So the last balance for our was um and a lot a uh, lot of ventures went through and we knew a lot was coming through. So um at, at that time it, yeah, it would have been seventy pounds had it not been topped up. My question is, why is it 300 pounds? Petty cash for the you? It's an allowable limit. I, I'm not disputing that. I'm just asking, what's the you been 300 quid for? Moving forward, I think it's been used since December in there. No, it's been shut down, hasn't it? Mm. So, yeah. so, but that will start to go down again. It's always popped back up to the figure, which is three hundred pounds, I think, which is in the uh, usable limit in that that tin. Yeah. So, no one's answered the question. Just said, what what's he using the three hundred quid for? That's my question. Well, it will be used going forward for the um, for the field project, yeah, um, field so projects, and for other activities going. Once they start again, that money will then start to come down again. So you're paying the girls' project in cash. Or <laughs> they like if the youth staff go to Tesco to get supplies or food resources. Yeah, they take cash to go, and, and then they come back with a receipt and sign up. Shipping and that's all what's on here. Yeah. And then they're all checked and signed off. So we checked with them what they're spending. Well, we have all the receipts, so we see the breakdown. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's authorised, linked to the actual project that's taking place, the actual youth events. Um, that is managed by um, by Graham. So I think they have um, cooking classes and things like that. So they obviously need to draw the power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have a second there? I will second. Have those been paid as proposed for the next day? Um, the one at, we're not on that yet, I don't think, but at Bailey's Court will no longer function. Very basic standard two thing, which if you don't keep an eye on it, and if you don't keep an eye on it, it burns. Right, so item 843 is consideration of 2021 and 2022 community festivals. So you have the briefing update in your agenda pack with the breakdown of everything and clearing there and the costing um, and the officer recommendation unfortunately is when considering all the points that itemised in the report with so many unknown factors at this moment in time in order to minimise the financial costs for the town council our recommendation to the council for 2021 event completely yeah Yes, yes, yes. 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 Y
get crazy. Yeah. That ain't what they need. Basically, whether they're doing space, I'm sort of Well, yes, that, that's the first bit, and then we'll go on to look at these places then. So, well, it, it is unfortunate, but I just would have thought that so many unknown quantities. And I'm happy to go with you, do not. I was saying that I had something in the data, and that might just propose that, so all those in favour. Probably not really in favour, but... Uh, no, I don't know. We did in favour of it. We're not in favour of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that's the council of 2021 festival. Hmm. So then looking at the 2022 festival, so the 2022 festival is the last one that I call an event company in contracted to provide. Mm -hmm. So the extract few minutes is below. So our office, our, the office of recommendation is that the 2022 festival, rather than the event company being paid their money, their fee apportioned equally over 10 months, which is what's been done for many years, to ensure that we comply with the new financial regulations in respect of companies not being paid up front for services, the event company will be requested to send in a monthly breakdown and invoice for work done and cost incurred. This invoice is then paid monthly. This will ensure that if an event has to be cancelled at short notice, there will be no money due to be paid back to the town council by any event company who may be running events on the That's behalf of the town council. No, we said we don't pay up front. You yeah, pay. Yeah. You are. You're going to do it. You're going to pay a monthly for the people. Yeah, but the invoice will be directly related to what is actually done in that month. So yeah, some month, the yeah. So some month, the invoice might only be for four hundred pounds. What we what we would do is we would actually have physically, which is not good. Well, you have. Yeah, I mean, he has given a breakdown of what he's done month and month in this report since last September. So I would envisage that we would get one of those each month. Um, and then an invoice equates into the relevant number of hours. So no, I'm not saying that it would automatically be the same amount figure each month. It will be directly dependent on what he's done. This is really just sort of regularising the system. Yes, yes, yes. And then you also please need to set the date for the 2022 festival. Now, traditionally, the festival would be the second weekend in June. However, in 2022, there's an extra bank holiday day for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. So councillors could therefore consider holding the community festival over that weekend, 3rd to 5th June, to tie in with the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebration. So we won't be having that, will we? The Duke's Day. The Queen's, the Queen's Platinum? It's a wedding anniversary. No. No, we're no. in at the moment. Yeah, oh, right. It's actually, it's actually the coronation. Oh, the coronation. Oh, yeah. It's not. Because there's a say of the last due to the year to the Mike is proposing what's recommended and tabled and impact. Uh, John is seconding that. All those in favour? Mm -hmm. That's your yeah. But the recommendation there. Um, and then, so does that include the, the that weekend? When it's the office office recommendation. It yeah. yeah. So marvelous. Thank you. Happy with that, Michael. Yes. Oh, just a slight um. Mm. I haven't seen the book. 
Seems like Bob was more than one. Yeah, they swapped it round next year because I got this from the dot gov dot UK website. So yeah, no, that the dates are right. I have to double check that. It's to give everybody a, a really long weekend to celebrate. Right. We'll move on. We've still got time to get through. So item 18.5 is the replacement of the Bain School play area and item 18.5.1 is to the story maintenance place with play or replacement points. Yeah, so you up. have um, a proposed scoring matrix in your agenda pack, which um, the chair and pleasure you look at and Dell has been working on with him as well. And it is hoped that when the quotes were submitted, that we can actually arrange a session for as many councils as possible when we open the envelope to actually come in and get involved in the evaluation criteria matrix. I think it's just been happy with all yes. this then. Yeah. 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 Anybody, any comments on matrix? A lot of this is, is, is input anyway as well, but yeah. He wanted value for money and pay value. Yeah, it could be more the highest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 No comments? Anyone? Not? Just to ask, just um, know what other authorities do. Uh, we must be in step with everybody else. Yeah, I think we are. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to propose to make this. John, John, hey John, John, then all those in favour? That's you know. Okay. Right, then we move on to item 8.5.2, which is the approval of the fees for the, the bank funding of the union. Right. So this is, if you remember, you, you did this for the um, the Ennerberg Trust, and this is for the other lot of grant funding. Um, you just need to nominate two councillors to actually sign the agreement. Um, it was Chair of Council and the Chair of Finance, isn't it, signed the Ennerberg one? That would be sensible, I think. So. No, that was the Ennevert one. This is the other grant oh, yeah, one that we've got. This is the second one. They're very similar, yeah. but it's a different right. one. So, yeah. Right. My um, good stop is um, three. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Michael's proposed. Anything second to Michael? Yeah. Ed? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see John Pantner. Ed's got him slightly wire there. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Yes. No, no, that's it. It's just a no, I don't think they will stop the actual form of agreement for this now and yet, but you both mm -hmm. signed the other one, haven't you? And then they just that one. Yeah. Cool, so 8.6 is the renewal of the all site safety and maintenance contract. Yeah, you have this in your agenda pack. So I was hoping to join the, the meeting this evening, but I think it's had a rather a large threat of emergency. So, so really everything's in there, and I hope everybody's had a look through. Um, this was one that was paid up front. That won't happen going forward. It will be paid payment monthly in arrears for whichever company you go with. Um, officer recommendation is that you have two similar quotes, then you have one other quote in, one partial quote that actually hasn't covered anything, and the other quote they haven't um, captured the, the level of what is required for the contract. So that's why their quote is so much lower. So the officer recommendation is that A1 has provided the service to BFTC for over 10 years, providing fast, professional, and comprehensive rates for any additional work, carrying out the in shortly time 
they retain the same charges as the current contract. Due to the charges include £1,500 the office or the skate park is a new addition, but they can increase their costs. But they are flexible, you know the site well, which allows staff to be able to just get on with any work. So the suggestion is that you accept the quote from A1 to ensure professional continuity. But again, it's not going to be paid up front, it will be paid monthly. Um, I'm I think you need to be sure how to do the work. Um, exactly. I think it's three years. Let me check that. I will. But you've got here at the end, excluding the skate park item, and you've got within the skate park really. That's all the contradictory terms. Sorry, where does it say the um, excluding? It's got the on the front page. Yeah. I've got that. Where does it say? In the end of that sentence, it's excluding skate park items. Yeah, so that the excluding skate park items is linked to the 350 items on all four main sites to be tested. Just means that whatever's in the skate park hasn't been counted, but it's included within the quote. So that directly relates to the fact that there's three, approximately 350 items. I didn't like the applicant, but it's so it's taken on board. Well, it's included, but it, the, the actual figure isn't included within the grant. Okay. Any other comments on the report we've got from Pax? Nothing. Anybody happy to go or propose the officer's recommendation? It's A1. Yeah, I'll propose it. That was like lightning speed yeah. there from the back, back to Franklin. Franklin. The facts proposed, Franklin seconded. All those in favour? It's A1, is it? I thought it was the chat for now. No, A1. <laughs> um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, up and then Thank you. And item 8.7 is to approve bills and direct credits <coughs> for payment, which is obviously your packs. Yeah, I do want to know what they're using it for. In the kitchen at Bailey's Court Activity Centre, obviously hirers use the kitchen and they do get a poster uh, and microwave provided for it to replace a broken toaster. You do actually. They were in today. Mm -hmm. You have new PCFOs as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a long term replacement. Mm -hmm. Favour. 
Welcome to the um, planning meeting of uh, Wednesday, 28th of April at 8 o'clock. I'm sorry it was been delayed, but there was uh, the planning meeting over there. Um, so we will start. Can we elect someone to chair the meeting? Yeah, we can elect somebody to chair the meeting. Um, yeah, I'm also here. Chair is um, uh, uh, Tom Sigley. Um, okay, yeah. Tom, uh, I propose Tony. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay, those in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, thank you, uh, yeah. Councillor. Um, right, emergency procedures, we know what you've got to do at your own homes, and we know what we've got to do here. Um, right, so, uh, filming, as you know, clubs filming. Oh, yeah. We're not filming, but we're recording. And that's in line with the government or these regulations in 2014. Submissions for the public, anything which is not currently on the agenda, um, because for the public wants to say something which is not on our agenda, we still not free. Aware of. Sorry, Vic? Not that I'm aware of. I, I've joined uh, as a sort of reference to Keith Planning that I've written to uh, about a proposed mast in uh, Stoke Gifford. And Bradley Stoke, so that's why I've come to this uh, this meeting today. Hello, Vic. Thanks. Is Hello. That, that's not on the agenda, yeah. is it? Yeah, one it of the planning applications. Is yeah. the Winterbourne Road one? That's, that's the one. one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. That's on the agenda, so we'll speak about that in a second. Thank you. Um, right, so um, apologies from Epson, because obviously Terry Cullen, because she's on sick leave. 
Anybody else? No, anybody else is talking to her? Anyone else? But brilliant. Um, so, declaration by members under the Local Government Act. Any further things? As I said, I've got one coming up, but I can't explain what it is right now. But that is, um, it's something. But anyway, um, announcements by the chair. Um, there's no real announcements because Cherry should be chairing this meeting and she's not here, she's not well. Um, so, um, I think it might be enough for people to get a card for her actually. Um, yeah. um, right, to confirm the minutes for the 24th of March 2021 as a correct record. Um, yeah. Like right to propose things, is that Tom? Yeah, yeah. Right to propose, I'm thinking that. Yeah, Michael, Ed, you, I would, Ed was shoving his hand, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah you seconded yeah. it then. So, those in favour of the approval of the minutes? Uh, you know? I do, well, if you could. Finish one of his pages and yeah, sign the date of Thank you. Um, so I'm signing these because there's quite a few. Um, we can move on to the next item, which is item six, to consider any matters arising from the minutes not covered elsewhere on the agenda. And 6.1 is the bench point on the shared book way, pedestrian spirit cycle way. Um, so of course you're to look at transport priority list. Yeah, the update is I'm still chasing for a meeting. I um, emailed on the 14th of April and next week I will try again and actually see if I can phone and call them and speak to them. So yeah. Okay. Um, 6.2, the uh, e-scooters pilot project in Bradley State. Shall I give you yeah. Yeah. Sharon's going to give us a, a resume. So you, in your agenda pack, you have the update on the e-scooter pilot project and where we are now and what we had from South Law. And I downloaded the app to just see how it actually works. I would just point out I do not intend to use one of the scooters, but I just wanted to see how it works and it, it is quite interesting with the no-go areas um, and the parking hub. So where we are is we are currently trying to arrange another meeting with Boy and South of Council to look at the projects in town, especially the location of the parking zones. There are a number of zones that Council feel are in the wrong location, these be at the entrance to the local public house, plus locations which lead to the east to blocking or obstructing the public footpath and pavement. So I've now emailed Southwest Council three times asking for a range of meeting. Plus today I left a message on the South Gloss Council officer's answer machine. I'm still waiting to hear back on that. I sent an email out to all council. <laughs> Oh, Sharon. Gone, Sharon. Sharon, you're gone. Sharon. Hello. Hello. Always forgiven. <laughs> Push not, sir. Is it something you said, Andy? Good be. She's gone now, look. It's the way you tell them. I think I probably bored us to death again. Oh dear. Hi, Tom. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. We lost um, we lost signal down at this end, so we'll just get reconnected. Yep. 
Okay. Um, do you want to say that last thing? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think you, I assume you were all still there whilst I gave the update and no. said that. You weren't midstream on voice scooters. Oh. You, got, or you left a message on the telephone. Oh, okay. So you got yeah. that one. I'm still waiting a response yeah. from the three. I've emailed three times and left a message on the answer machine. And then yesterday, I sent an email to all town councillors, not just this committee, but other councillors as well, because obviously they will be having feedback from residents, um, asking for any questions and queries that we put to South Gloss when we can finally have a meeting with them, but I haven't heard anything back from anybody yet. So, Michael's just raised one about the... On Hunter's Ridge, on the top of page four, it's, uh, there's no spare land there, they're just left. Because okay, so that's not the pavement. Right, okay, well then that's... Well, as we know, there were, Michael, there were 89 scooters, and it was I listed thought, as 100, but it was 89, parked on a corner of Elm Lane, I think it was, which is Redland, not Clifton. Yeah, and close to the Downs, I know. I believe they've stopped them in Clifton Village. Yeah, they have, and Coventry, and several other areas of the country, I believe. Yeah. And the quicker we can get them to stop here, I think the better. Um, I think the thing is, um, Tony, you know, uh, Sharon, you did say about uh, stopping them on certain areas. Well, yeah. I think most people want them stopped on their pavements. Yeah. So most areas are Bradley Stone, if you say pavements, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're supposed to be driven on the road, and they're being driven all the time, most of the time, on pavements. Yeah. Um, and. Um, I've spoken to a few constituents and they're absolutely livid with the things. They are. Um, one, one question I'd like them to answer if they can, how can you stop the parents of the children registering them and letting the kids drive them? Mm -hmm. It's fraud. It's fraud on the uh, license and it's fraud on insurance because yeah. the moment someone else gets on it under 18, they are not insured. Well, it's constantly going on. There were three children on one of these scooters, on one scooter the other day. Yeah. It's abuse, isn't it? Total abuse. Uh, one thing that might be worth noting, one for Sharon and, uh, and anybody that wants to make complaints of any description and include Wecker, Amanda, oh, what's her name, Edmondson, Wecker, is no longer in that post. So she said, please take me off the list. <laughs> she then mentioned uh, a girl by Christian name only, which was a fat lot of good, so you don't know who to email to, and they're just getting around it by saying, uh, contact the boy, contact uh, complaints uh, email. But uh, I can't help but wonder that by doing that, you're not including the police, you're not including anyone else and it could get lost in the ether. So is the complaint actually going to be responded to? I sent my threaten to Finn. My copy in the whole world and his wife. And they, they can only say they got it there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you like to come in, Ed? Would, Ed? Yeah, if you, if you can hear me. Yes, yeah. we can. Good. Um, I've tried to push hard with Keith against boy on this to stand up and be counted in the proper regard because our area is definitely not the first area where problems have been seen. Yeah. If you read further into these exploits in um, other countries such as Germany, especially with the city of Berlin Council took them to task and so they were happy that they were running it in a proper fashion. I do ask the question, if they can get it right in that city, why can they not get it right in other cities? Now, the, the, the issue I think here is, is that we as Bradley Stoke Town Council have to piggyback through South Gloss, yeah. because it's a wider area than just ourselves. Uh, we are upholding the promise of Bradley Stoke, 
town councils that we care about our community, but we need to make it clear to the residents, we've heard you and we've heard you and we're fully aware of what is going on. However, the process of pinning Roy down to giving us the sensible answers one would expect of a business is proving to be difficult. It doesn't help with the fact that Lacey, uh, despite being chased very hard by our town clerk Sharon, is not responding. And uh, indeed, having the update tonight that this other lady that was on there has abandoned the post uh, and says, I no longer care. Uh, I think I would ask our South Gloss councillors who have that close association with South Gloss, raise their ire to the chair of South Gloss himself, darling Toby, and poke him hard and say, what are you playing at? You know, this, this is not just some game of ball games in a park. This is life-threatening. Three kids on a bike are going to cause an accident to themselves or someone else. And I think there's no point in us going round and round and round about on stuff we already know. We have to have South Gloss lead it and push it in. And indeed, I think it's now time to raise it up to Jack McCresty, who we all know and is our Conservative MP, and say, come on, Jack, you've got to start pushing harder because it's all over the area. I think, Ed, as well, what we have to consider is, A, they're, they're loath to do anything at the moment, so Gloss, because they're signed up to a pilot. The pilot was introduced by the Wecker mayor. Now, I don't want to get political because of Perda, but let's be honest, have we seen any of the blurb coming out from the Wecker or candidates on boy scooters? I think it would be a brave one that said, I would have the whole screen, the whole scheme postponed at the moment, pending a review. You know, we're not seeing anything positive, are we? You know, and this is a Weka scheme, and I will say that, don't forget, the current leader of the council, Toby, is the deputy Weka mayor. So well, perhaps we ought to needs... write to the Weka themselves. That's why I say Jack Lepresti needs to be involved and there needs to be a question of conflict of interest because it's, it's, it's a safety issue. And I, I don't care what Toby's standing is or what his secondary business is. The fact is he's, he's on South Gloss Council and we're raising it as councillors at a lower tier through you South Gloss councillors at a higher tier. Do something. Yeah. Because why? Here's the question. and uh, Here's the legal question I will ask wearing a legal hat. Why is it when pressure is being put on them in Coventry for exactly the same things, they withdraw it, but they discriminate against this area by not withdrawing it, but are happy to take the money? I have asked people that use the app and actually looked into how the app is used. And why these bikes are parked wherever is because when you drive to an area, the GPS is so widespread, it's a nuclear strike zone, it says you can park here and gives you a nice red bling. Yeah. So you can leave the bike in someone's garden. The person says, well, boy has told me I can park my bike here, so I don't care. I think that's the problem, Ed. We're, we're looking at postcodes on this, and when they say, look, you can block a road or a field, yes, but the moment you say, Kids are riding on a pavement such as Braden Avenue, BS 34 or 60H. They'll say, right, well, we can't stop them from riding in that postcode because they can be on the road. But we need the pavements on both sides of the road made illegal. It, it's, it's boy stepping out of, the, uh, out of the lasso. That's all it is. We, we, you know, we need someone with the balls... Uh, forgive me for saying that in public, but we need someone with the balls, the cojones, to go to Foy and start poking them in the eye, saying we're not happy. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And we're not getting it. So I think that, you know, we need to write a very strong letter of complaint through to South Gloss Council that, you know, Lacey's not performing. He no. sat there and promised I'll do things, but, you know, uh, where is he? You know, where the heck is he? That the meeting we had with him, Ed, that was you, me, uh, 
and Tom, and Tom Lacey, wasn't it? and Tom Adija. Uh, it was, he, he said that he hadn't long been in that post and he'd inherited things. Well, he should have been brought up to speed, shouldn't he, before he had the meeting with us. But clearly it that isn't happening. But there is a... Can I, can I Okay, thank you, Keith, for a moment. Uh, Michael wanted to say something down here. No, I just want to make the point that uh, I think one of the reasons why this is getting favourable with uh, comments from the hierarchy is that Bristol is very keen on sustainable transport. This is keen as to sustainable transport. And I'm afraid Bristol over, overlooks everything around here. And what Bristol wants, Bristol seems to get. The green yeah. has gloss, that's the problem with. I mean, I know what you're saying, uh, Michael, um, but we, we, I think um, South Gloucestershire, on the, the wacker side of things, tends to want to go green, and um, they're pushing that through to South Gloss, and then we're, 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 but we're numbered with it, uh, uh, you know, as people on the ground. And of course, Bath have gone the same way. They've signed up to this, and it's being rolled out right throughout the Wecker regions. Yeah, yeah. On a trial, and the trial is getting bigger by the day. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to propose that as a town council that we write to the various different people, uh, South Gloucestershire, Boy, and copy into Jack the Press, um, with a strong uh, letter putting down on various complaints and see if they can follow up that way because and put in there that we just we, this guy Tom Lacey is not responding. Tony, can I also suggest then that we include because we're in elections at the moment, we're gonna yeah. have a new PCC, we're gonna have a new Wacker Mayor, and yeah. there will be, you know, obviously changes all over the place. Whoever's gonna take on these roles, they are gonna have to accept responsibility for this pilot. So yeah. at the moment, we none of us know who those he or she are going to be. But I think they are the people that in the driving seats, they are the people that will, in the case of the PCC, they'll have to tell the police what they're going to do, impose the Road Traffic Act, which is what this is all about. And if there are vehicles on the road being driven without insurance and being driven recklessly, then they should be taken off the road. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I, I, all I was going to say is if councillors can think of specific questions, let me know and we can include the questions in the letter that was sent. I would ask why scooters that are just abandoned really nilly cannot be treated as waste tipping, fly tipping, and, and removed. Yeah, apparently on the app, they, they do park in the wrong place, so, so they get fined. But does that happen? Well, yeah. you, can't, you can't end the journey if you're not parked in a proper designated parking yeah. zone. But as Keith yeah. said, the parking zones are quite, some of them are quite wide and woolly, and so yeah. people can just leave it on a verge. Well, that's, that's, that's a complaint now. Yeah, and that's what yeah. well, that, yeah. Put that down as a complaint. Yeah. I had three drive down the pavement the other afternoon. They nearly knocked an 89 year old chap off his rollator. Yeah. yeah. And then two of them rolled on because one stalled. Now, that dunks machine was left on the side of someone's driving driveway. And do you know what time, after I reported it as an abandoned scooter, do you know what time somebody turned up? 20 to 2 in the morning, big white van, they get out, radio blasting, and they're making a hell of a noise outside that person's house with this scooter, whacking it apart, changing the battery, and then he got back in the cab, pointed something at it, to try and get the thing to go from amber to green. Right. Okay. Well, he, he couldn't get that to operate properly, so he got out of the cab, and bear in mind, there's all this noise going on, it was nearly two o'clock in the end, and he's banging and kicking this scooter, and thumping it with his fists to get the green light to come on. Now, that's not fair on the public. You know, it would have been easier to just pick it up, put it in the back of the van, and take it away. It was, it was dumped. 
Please, can you perhaps put that down as a little summary and send it through to Sharon? Already done, Tony. My uh, wife complained, and so did I, and we filmed it. Well done. Um, because that could be something else that could be sent up. Yeah. yeah. So you propose that we do the letter? Yeah, I, I would yeah. like to propose that we send the letter off. As, before I do that, Andy, would you like to say something? Uh, uh, I just wanted to say that it would... Would it not be worth leaving this letter a week and a bit? Oh yeah, I'm not going to do it tomorrow. I'll wait until we have got a new PCC yeah. and, yeah. and new weapon there. Yeah, we, know, we can then target it. With the right. no, I will continue to chase that box officer yeah. for the next. Okay. So, so it'll be in post for five years, so they have a four uh, shoulders. Mm -hmm. Well, plenty of time to sort this issue out. I, I, I propose that we send the letter out when we got we know the new weapon there is yeah. and the new PCP. And we we copy them all in yeah, into it. Yeah. Um and that's that's my proposal. Does anybody like to say I that? second that. Yeah, yeah. I'm second it. Those in favour? Yeah. Right. And then if anybody else I mean keep sending in the complaints to Sharon. Well I don't really want the complaints <coughs> because we there is a mechanism that the complaints can go through to, but things that I can put in the letter, definitely. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, thank you. Well, was an update. I, don't, I don't want 200 things from residents. There was an update the other day as well from the police, uh, itemising the amount of complaints that they've received that actually include voice scooters, and the majority of them were claimed to be privately owned scooters. Oh, uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought that. Yeah. I think if everybody put in the complaints that they know of, that would be reversed in five minutes flat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can we move on then to the next item on the agenda, which is um, uh, another problem area, which is the uh, crib patchway metro bus extension get to back thing. So you have all the information in your agenda pack. This is just a uh, yeah. briefing update, really, and all the questions I've asked. Um, and then I sent out another two updates that were to everybody, they're not here to think about like they are intending today, but they are on our website on the Dixie Patch Lane page. Um, um, yeah, so. Basically, it's going to go on until at least, I think, December, I think. We hope. Uh, at best. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, at the best. Well, hopefully, um, from August, there will, I think it's August, there will be one-way system operating under the bridge. I think that's what yeah, they're yeah. hoping, but it is yeah. only one direction. Sharon, you were at the meeting on Monday, weren't you? Yes, I was. I believe I wasn't able to attend that one, but uh, I had a meeting today, as it happened, with uh, Mark King and uh, South Gloss, the director, Nigel Riddler, and other people connected with this project. I understand the meeting did not go very well, and that people had a total, well, they're, they're not happy, are they, by any No, way. no, the, the, the local residents who live close to Gypsy Patch Lane and also a lot of the businesses who are yep. just, they all feel, you get the impression that they feel unjustifiably that they're banging their head against the wall and, and nobody's nothing, listening, that's what they nothing's said. Nothing's happening and, yeah. Well, Today we took up those issues with the officers and uh, there were some very vocal comments made, I can assure you, um, and the officers have agreed to uh, review the issues, some of them, and as I asked for two months ago, the issue of the lady that has been waiting to hear about compensation has finally now, uh, apparently there's an officer assigned, he's been to see her, they are in dialogue and there are issues now being dealt with and she will have a personal officer now dealing with that issue. Because I said, I'm fed up of this complaint being raised at every single meeting. That is not the purpose of the Gypsy Patch liaison group. And it takes up far too much time. As yeah. well as planning meetings and parish meetings and everything else. So they finally agree and uh, officers are, well, reviewing the way that they operate, including, I might add, people complained last night that they're fed up with seeing workmen stood around doing nothing, and that's why this project is behind. 
Yeah. Uh, Chair, can I just also like no, yeah, you know the work that was carried out in the Bradley Stoke North side, you know, they were metros. The same contractor, I think the same kind of delay. I don't know why they have uh, repeated cases of poor planning and the delays happening. It was Griffiths, Tom, up there. Now, the contractors here, there's two contractors. One is Griffiths for Network Rail. The other one is South Goss. Now, it was said that if it was Network Rail's contractor, they may be working to a proper project managed scheme. South Goss, they've had six months to get on and do that highway. They've sat back and done nothing. And now we're having this scheme held up. And they're on COVID, no doubt. Yeah, and that, like I said, if anything happens again now, if we have a third spike... You know, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, we're south gone, so there's a spike behind doing the road. Who's that? Who's speaking? That is the resident. Sorry. Um, who is the Alan Griffiths then? So that, that is a contractor, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's not related to me, by the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> the clever <Kremlin> interest. <laughs> but you're absolutely right, Tom. It mirrors what happened two years ago in Woodlands Lane and Aztec. Same contractor. The whole scheme fell way back. It's gone way over project. God knows how much this is going to cost. It's but, you know, the end. we're fed up with it, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, what, what was the proposal for there that? Isn't there isn't an update. Okay, no, just an update. I'll keep you posted. Thank you. Um, right, number seven. Um, to know the outcome of previous planning applications and other documents pertaining to planning environmental issues. This is um, the final application we had last week. Five decisions that made. Three of which agreed with us, one of which council didn't comment on that we asked, and the one that we said no to, and that's what they did. Yeah, but we're um, trying to form, form a window mm -hmm. in the whole area. Okay, well, we can't do much about that. Um, right, number eight. Uh, to fair response to the problem of charges regarding planning assets relating to present stem. Right, bear with me one second whilst I plug in and then I will share the screen. The first one is um, P21 of the 01283 PBR, with a single storey rear extension to four additional living accommodation at 43 Portlands. And it's the name we have here is Ellen Turner. No, that's the planning officer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm with this application, Helen Turner. What do you need to do? Yes, I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Yes, So, first one is the Okay, so. I'm just going to put a bit of paper here, then that's good, then that's a bit reassuring. Okay, so this is the new image, it is the new Moment. 
itu kan bukan ya. Itu soitan. Ya, makan. Jadi sekarang saya ingin tapi di tempat yang saya sediakan. Jadi dia keluar dari Yeah, okay. Um, any objections to up anybody? No. Okay, so so Keith proposed it. The right to second it. Ed Scott was hand up first. So those in favour? There is a minute twenty four for the body. So move on to the next one, which is the installation of one rear dormer to facilitate a loft conversion resubmission to forward state meadow. <laughs> this one, we it came up and. No, we we actually council didn't object to it, um, but South Block refused it because it was too too bold to be. I think. Was it to do with the was it to do with the cat soil removal? I'm not sure. Let's, let's have a look at what, what, what they've got. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme nor reason when it comes to dormers. Sometimes they let them go, sometimes they yeah. don't. Yeah. yeah. No. So if I give you... Well, years ago, if it was on the rear of the building, it didn't really matter years ago. Personally, I think they look better with a cat slide, and then you have, you lose the flat roof then, look. Yeah. Freed. So that this is why it was refused. To the scalable form appearance. That would be everything. Yeah. And it was will be used with a tile finish to ensure that the door was inconspicuous inconspicuous as possible. So if I scroll through this document you can see where the so this is just examples of how the thin Bradley Stokes that have dormers on them. Yeah. 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 Did Marie Bass say in that comment that it was wrongly? That's existing. Yeah, yeah. that's existing. So if I now see down, you can see oh, that's, that's what's proposed. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah that, that looks quite all right. Yeah. Is in keeping with the template. <laughs> Do you want to move that somebody? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andy's second is Andy. Sorry, Ed. Andy, you're there. Yeah. We all agree. He's Andy. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, can you just take oh, away? Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 That's actually quite nice. That's one of the nicer ones I've seen. It is, really, yeah. yeah. How's it got a flat roof? Oh. Yeah, that's true. I think it looks better. Yeah. Ed, were you in? Did you vote in favour? Yeah. Yes, I did. All right. I think that's your number. Okay, number yeah. number three then. The erection of a first floor side extension for additional living accommodation at 126 feet field drive. Right, bear with me a minute. A so first floor side extension to form additional living accommodation feet field drive. Okay. So this house here. Okay. Mm. 
and it's this one here. So it's obviously yeah. uh, the size that's come so out over here. The garage. And show so you the thing elevation. Yeah, so the interesting elevation. Doesn't look as though it's too close to any other property. I just want to see what it looks like. How many bedrooms does it up to the allocation of parking? So, that's what's there at the moment. Yeah. And that's what's proposed. So, if you show you the floor plan. Oh, yes, I've only shown the extension of yeah. the for the full usage of what we've got for the place. Oh, how many bedrooms is that? Yeah, so this is the existing one now. One, two, so. three, four. Yeah, that four bedrooms. So, four bedrooms. Yes, four bedrooms. Just exactly. Well, so, so, so we've got room in the. We've got a garage. It becomes now six bedrooms. Yeah. I think. I think I can do well, if it's six bedrooms, you've got to have, uh, is it three or four parking spaces? Yeah. yeah. Right, so it's, it's one, two, three bedrooms, and then an office and study. Oh, right, that's the yeah. way of getting it's around. It's one suite, isn't it? Yeah. That's the way of getting around, not classing it as bedrooms. Yeah. By calling so, it a study in an office. Yeah, so at the moment, it. Now they use these bedrooms. So at the moment, it's two bedrooms and a study. Yeah. Yeah, it's four bedrooms. And it's going to... Six. Two, three, three bedrooms to study in an office. Yeah. They'll go through. Move it, Chair. Yeah. Oh, oh there's a pot in there. Oh. Can I a minute? How many parking spaces they got in here? You've got a carriage and you've got room for two. Yeah, so it's actually yeah. the other way around. They've got plenty of parking on the front there. They've built it off the garage by the look of that. No, the garage saved it, don't I think? No, there's, yeah, a, there's, there's a, a, a storage area. Yeah. Storage and dining room. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. Probably making it a bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. So they've lost the garage, so that's um, one car space gone. We've got two, possibly three if they use the tree area as well. But Just this. <laughs> quite wobbly, didn't it, the driveway there? It is, yeah. It's yeah. probably yeah. car width. It's definitely got two, oh, as you yeah, say, not more. I don't think you get two on that, so that's fair. Bear in mind how well the garage is. It's probably the size of one garage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if they, if they lose a bit of that glass, they could. Yeah. It'll go through, I'm sure. Is that the reluctant um, yes? Hello, Andy. Yeah, Andy. Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay, Andy proposed it. Would like to second it? Yeah. Ed, sorry, Ben. Ed got his fist in that look first. Those in favour? Hey. Yeah. Tom? No. Uh, against? Two. Two against. Right. Any abstention? Is there anybody coming, I think? Yeah, no, we will be voting. Right. So, two again, I'm right in favour. Thank you very much. Okay, let's so move on to the next one, which is the uh, prior notification of the intention to install a new 20 metre column supporting six antennas 
together with ground based equipment, cabinets, and ancillary development at land at Winterbourne Road. Uh, just bear with me a minute. Okay, we've got a member of the public to speak on this one. Yeah, I'm sure. Quite a few. We'll probably. Bear with me a minute, I'm on the paper. Just pull up the application. So there are numerous documents here. Um, yes, there are. Is um, it relating to the one that we had recently, which was with the E? Uh, that was Winterbourne Road. But yeah, I think what happened was it was going to go on the other side of the road, and then right. they found a culvert, so they couldn't put it on the other side of the road, so they're putting it. If there is a minute, I can show you where. Well. Going to go. In the no. Yeah. So originally it was going to go over on this side, but now they've moved it literally to here, and there are houses just there. So I can show you the Google image. I should possibly declare an interest on this because that's pretty much Ellen Hay Road, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's Elming Down. Is it Elming Down? Elming Down Close. Down, yeah. Elming Down Close, yeah. Great. So it's on this piece of land just here, literally. Very, very That's, close. that's checking the scene. Uh -oh. So that's what that's the one on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. And that's what That's the one on the other side of the road, Sharon. That yeah. one is yeah, two meters yeah. tall. And the, the next picture will show you the twenty meter height, which is that one. Colossal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, oh, that is the, the, that and, and that is fourteen meters away from uh, the, my property. Yeah. Fourteen meters. Yeah. 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 Is it fell down? Yeah, right up. It. It, it would hit the house. Definitely. Yeah. Six yeah. Of it. Yeah. yeah. So there are. Um, there is no net. There are. Two, 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 five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Well, no, apologies, they are all, uh, nobody's in favour of it. Nine objections. Nine objections. And there's, a, there's also a tenth, my I submitted uh, nearly two weeks ago, but that, for some reason, that hasn't entered on the, uh, it's not visible on the uh, website right, yeah. yet. I just checked on the system this afternoon. Yeah, so, I think what is quite evident on this one, Chair, is that the members of the public the householders were not contacted. I believe there was only three people that yeah. were told about this mass, yeah. and it's going to affect, well, by the sounds of it, quite a lot of people. Yeah. And I think, you know, what has been said, because I know that, is it Vic, I think you had contact with the planning officer, Simon Ford? Or? Simon Ford, yeah. I've spoken to Simon Ford and asked why only three properties were consulted. I wasn't consulted. I live at Wesley's Place, which is the next road along. I'm about 22 metres away from it, but it would go in my garden, let's put it that way. Um, yeah. But he said that he had justifiably sent enough letters to those that needed to be told. 
um, which I thought was completely inadequate. Um, I sent a letter to him, Toby Savage and Jack Leprezzi, because I was not very happy, um, mm -hmm. and gave him options of putting it back on the other side of the road, um, mainly because this area has already, only in January, just had that whole road resurfaced at a cost. Mm -hmm. um, it's had all the trees that were chopped down on Gypsy Patch have now been replanted in that area. Mm -hmm. And they want to stick this equivalent of a Saturn V rocket behind our houses. <laughs> so um, I, I politely asked how they would feel if it was behind one of their houses. Um, but nobody chose to respond to that. I, on one side, I understand the need for technology, 5G and growth and everything else. But on the other hand, when you've got Mead Park and 40 acres directly opposite which is a huge area of land where it will not affect anybody, i.e. visually, property value, uh, saleability of property, anything like that. Um, I just don't see why they decided that was the best place for it to go. Um, on a separate point, and Keith is more than aware of this, I've spoken to um, Richard Hancock, the Chief Superintendent of Patrick Police Station today, because of the speed of the road that this mast is going on and we've had seven accidents in four years on that patch of grass. So the likelihood of a vehicle impact is high, and if that should go over, then I feel so sorry for Piers, because it's in direct assault of his property. So mm. I just don't think, uh, from my perspective, I think it's a ludicrous decision. I think, Commissioner, I think, you know, on balance, I mean, we cannot uh, redesign the application or tell the applicant that he should put it somewhere else. But I think it's quite clear by the level of objections and the closeness to the property, it's totally out of keeping, it's in the wrong place. And I think there's only one solution we can do as a committee, and that is to object. Yeah, I, I'll, okay, I'll second that. Um, so is the proposal then that we object to this um, ask? And we've put the reasons that it's, um, uh, I don't know, out of character, uh, out of keeping, out of, out of keeping, too uh, close to the properties, to the property. yeah. yeah. Um, and anything else we can think of. Um, what's the thing? Yes, no. I think it's detrimental to the visual immunity. Yeah. yeah. Constitution. But, but if it's um yeah, thank you. If it's a residential property, um environmental hazards to the people if it's an anti area. Constitutes a danger to nearby properties, I think. Is that right, is that right, John? Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 It certainly affects yeah. the visual immunity. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So okay. we've got a uh, Tom. You know yeah. Objection. Yeah. Uh, okay. So is everybody apart from Michael who's abstained? Okay. Let's move on. All these people use my mobile phone. No mobile phone loss. Yeah. It is good to see residents coming to the meeting now to talk about yeah. the planning applications. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you for talking me about all of them. And uh, I was very, very, very surprised when I looked for the planning application. I didn't type in the number through pure laziness. I just typed in mass. And there are hundreds of them. Yeah. And yeah. I, 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 we are not the first people that will be complaining about this. Um, I, I'm all for it. But as I put in the letters to South Gloucestershire, has common sense completely failed? You know, you've got a park area with a 10 meter mast in front of it. And then a residential area, we put a 20 meter mask in front of it. I mean, it, it's just beggar's belief. Two, it really does. 
Okay, the problem we've got, got is that any that. applicant can apply for any application, whether he gets it or not is a different matter, but uh, you yeah. know, we, we're duty bound to accept any application, yeah. even if I was to put in an application to build on your land, you know, well, it, it, it is the qualified one. He's, he's, we've made the decision to object. Just yeah. Um, um, Ed, what would you like to say? Yeah, I, I have a question. In the, we object. Can it be overruled by South Cross Council? Of course yeah. it can. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just we just need to make clear to our friend there that yeah. we've objected. It's it's not you have not had the final answer. I just I just want to be clear on that. I, yeah, I, I think I think that it's aware of having spoken to the officer that obviously yeah. he can't make a decision until he sees how we are you know opposing it or going for it and obviously the level of objections now he can then go back to the applicant of course and suggest that they look at re reapplying yeah. or, or moving yeah. this yeah. yeah okay let's move on then thank we've got a few to do still um thank you for coming number thank, you thank you for your time thank you well, yeah, well, thank, thank you guys thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number five, variation of condition number one, attempt to plan in permission um, to alter the hours of uh, uh, Aldi. Um, their work from 5.30 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Saturday is inclusive. 5.30 to 7 o'clock, Sunday in public holidays. Uh, variation of the original permission, which was done many years ago, um, and I remember it vividly, um, the retention of the retail food store associated part of without complying with condition 06 attached to the planning permission restricted the hours of working at the premises. I think the main objections to this on the last time this came up was the objections to the deliveries um, being delivered um, at some of the hours in the morning. Yeah. There is um, that, um, a covering letter from, interestingly, um, I don't because the government have a problem, sorry, sorry, sir. I don't personally have a problem with the store being open, but I think the residents in that area, when this first came up a few years back now, were objecting to the delivery times. Yeah. Um, there's actually no comments whatsoever on the system from any any resident that's been on the system since 29th yeah. March. But the interesting yeah. bit is that the covering letter from the applicant says that actually they've been doing all these all this since COVID. Yeah. The government relaxed it, and there's been no complaints from yeah. anybody during the past year. That's correct. Yeah, the government relaxed the laws for um, shops, supermarkets. Unfortunately, what is probably meant to have been temporary can now be seen as permanent as far as the uh, owners of the stores are concerned because they're all going to say how well it's been, uh, you know, taken up by the customers. Um, people do need goods, but I think the delivery is another issue. If you've got trundling trucks, arctics, delivering rattling cages of food at half past four in the morning or five o'clock in the morning, that is not acceptable there. It's residential. Yeah. That's why it was yeah. refused the first one, uh, Keith. Um, yeah, there, is a, there is a note there. Just you can yeah. yeah. um, uh, impact of residential music. Yeah. Well, 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 well. The application proposal raises one principal issue, that is, the effect that the proposed extension to delivery hours through the variation of condition one of the planning permission, which was happened before, um, will have on the immunity of the nearby residential property, and whether any effect would be that adverse as to outweigh the benefit of the proposal. If I scroll down a bit further, there is, um, I'm sure I've read somewhere, here, yeah, so if you read this bit here from there. Government is temporary. Government is temporarily. Yeah. I think that's a very um, 
touch the explorer's reason. It's the word temporary, isn't it? I guess it can show, yeah, their argument is, well, they've been doing it past year and there's been no complaints at all, so they want to continue. But, but have they been delivering? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 from five to yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's what they've been and doing for past the year. Those complaints haven't been received uh, by them in the environment and health department. Um, I think if you were to ask the people around there now in view of what they're saying, they would probably say no, you know. But the thing is, I mean, obviously, a temporary permission has been allowed, and they're trying to use it as a permanent decision. Yeah, they haven't got a ban by the way, as they did. Yeah. Um, ben would like to say something. So I think we have a bad using a temporary thing as a rationale for something. Because I mean, there could be people living behind those houses who work from home and have to travel there and not to see all the, the other things that come with working life and be away from it and come back to the rest of the area. It's very unfair, it's a very, um, very narrow mind to do. Yeah, I mean, they've got a bit there where they say that they receive only one or two deliveries a day from HGV. Well, I think we could possibly make it a condition that those HGVs don't deliver until after 8.30, 9 o'clock. They make the point there that they need to deliver early so that uh, stock is on the shelves when people come in. I must admit, I know they, they, they don't open until 9. I think they open at 8. I think, I'll I think yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure Vicky goes there on her way to work, so I think it's 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, but I normally see them, the LD lorry, hovering around about seven. So I was quite surprised when it said those things were living from half five to half year. Yeah, I mean, they, they are saying that they're using locally sourced goods, so therefore they're in smaller vehicles, but they're HDV. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're talking huge, about. Yeah. I, I, you know, they can, they can have all their local deliveries before that, because they're smaller vehicles, not too many. But we could make it a condition that the H will be only for there after nine o'clock. I think probably we'd have to accept the normal working day, Tony. I mean, it, it, it would probably be eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Because the the vets are now as well, and they probably yeah. about eight, don't they? So there's movement backwards and forwards yeah, and things. <laughs> I know we don't have big lorries delivering, I, but no. people say that. I know our, our, main, our, our main complaint in Stoke Gifford when the co op was there was that people didn't like the noise of the uh, milk and dairy stuff being delivered early in big wire crates and then they're on wheels and they're wheeled across the car park. Now, obviously, that is quite a rattling noise. And that is what people didn't want to put up with. I noticed they say here their own lorries dock and they go to a sealed compact. Yeah. Well, at least for uh, modern techniques to ensure the technique, so sure noise can be effectively mitigated during the times of delivery. And it's been about it still at the rear of the lorry docks into the side of the building and it's still at the rear of the lorry docks into the side of the building to create a sill. Yeah. You know, well, no true. noise to escape from the vehicle of the building. Yeah. I think it was the residents at the back there that were complaining just about the deliveries being done earlier, didn't they? Mm. From, the, from the first application. Yeah. Two years back. Yeah, they did it then. Yeah. It's been on the system for months now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you do. Um, I mean, I knew the manager reasonably well, and um, he hasn't mentioned any that they put in some application. Mm -hmm. He knows I'm not happy. I think people have been more tolerant during COVID of the deliveries because obviously everybody's been aware of the shortages and the situation, so they, yeah. They, yeah. they may well have put up with the noises because of COVID itself, but whether that needs to continue from now on, as it says in this, it was temporary. 
I mean, let's be honest, if it all got lifted now and went back to normal, they could still have temporary again, couldn't they? Yeah. I mean, people did need toilet rolls and all the normal daily stuff, so obviously people weren't going to complain, were they, as long as they were getting their stuff, but I think it's this temporary becoming permanent, which is the issue. I think life was not normal, so people accommodated the changes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to become permanent. No. Um, right, we need to make a decision. Um, I think, like you said, Tony, with the provision that maybe the orange don't get delivered until 8 a.m.? Yeah. So, no objection on condition that HPV deliveries are from me to put. Deliveries do not commence until 8 a.m. Yeah? yeah. Does that include Sundays? Um, I think so. I, yeah. They're open later on a Sunday, remember? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if we if we're gonna do it, I think we're gonna have to do it for the seven days. Yeah. So we're happy with that to propose if someone were to propose that we um, we're okay with the hours, it's just that the the HPV deliveries are not to be started until after eight o'clock AM. Yeah, I'll propose that. Yeah. Ed's proposed it. Keith seconded it. Those in favour? Tom? Bab? Keith? Ed? Three? I don't think that. <laughs> Three in favour? Those against? One. 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 Abstentions? Two abstentions. So, Michael, did you what to do? Sorry, sorry, I, yeah. sorry, I didn't know that I was muted. Yeah. So, abstention. Oh, no, three abstentions, three in favour, one against. Right. So, it should be, there should be eight. So, the. Sorry, can we just do this again, both okay. in the next? Those in, those in favour, if I had to put hands up to the proposal. So it was Ed, Tony, Keith, and Keith. Right, the, those are against. Uh, it's okay. Okay. There's two against, so that's Ben and Andy, and then three extensions, three, six, seven, eight. That's it, lovely. Thank you. Okay, that's thank you. Very thank good. you. Right, moving on to numbers. Six, erection of one and a half. Sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, it, um, the erection one and a half story dwelling with access and associated groups. Resubmission. Fourteen Grange Close. Okay, with me a second. This is the one which was taken up. They were likely to uh, make it into a separate dwelling. I think. This is if this is the separate dwelling one. Is it? Yeah, this was. So this came originally, um, yeah. and it got refused. Yeah. yeah. And council, if you remember, if I show you the image, could you see where it is? So this, you remember this, this one on the corner here. So we want to build a house on that bit there. Oh. And I'll show you the um Yeah, yeah so, so this one we did have it's not long ago, so it was, it was on that piece of land there. So does he want to remove the garage? So if I show you the Okay. 
I am against it, but if someone actually feels that's all right. Yeah. yeah. I, I've done on that level as well. I, I think it's out of character. It, it's it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. It's been put on a slum. Yeah. And, you know, it's. Uh, <coughs> it's an infill, really. Yeah. It's just this overdevelopment, isn't it? Yeah, overdevelopment. Mm -hmm. Out of character. 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 Well, you, did, you did, Tom. Michael seconded it. Those, those in favour of objection to it. Yeah. Three, four, Tom's five. Eight. Yeah. Well, I'll take on this one, I think. Five. Yeah. And it's six. Two, three. Do you think they'll get it, Keithy? Four. I do, yeah. Six. Six. Yeah, Rocky, right? That's, well, you're in favour. So yeah, the objection, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. seven in favour and then one abstention. Yeah. Yeah. Seven against, not seven in favour. No, seven in favour. Objection. Objection. Not seven against. Let's move on. Let's move on because it's getting late. Like, get that contract. Right. Um, well, we're getting there now. We are getting <laughs> Right. Number seven. Erection of two-storey and single-storey side extension to form. And then it's ancillary to the main dwelling house. 70 sacks in one. Bear with me in a minute. Does this one come up before? No. Yeah, we've yeah. had quite a flood yeah. of them in Patch and Wave. I don't yeah. think we've had this one. All yeah. the houses down there have got a fair bit of land on, haven't they? Yeah, there's, there's, there's houses down there. Oh. Show you. It's this one here. Okay. Yeah. This is quite a big. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's like down here on the end there. Ooh. Didn't, didn't this one come up before, Sharon? Oh, no, I know. I know. I know. I know. I it looks familiar. It's a shared drive, isn't it? Um, one minute. Let me have... I apologise if it has a bit of my mind isn't thinking straight now. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's just a minute. So that's what's there at the moment. Yeah, okay, so that's what's there at the moment. So they are literally coming out here onto the side. They're opening an issue. Reduce their gardens, in fact, they have This is their garden here. Oh, is it? Yeah. Just side yeah, they're just like going across. Any objections? Um, no. It's been on the system for since the 12th of April. No, nothing I checked today. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you yeah. the existing elevation so you can see in a second. So it's that's what's there at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get it. It's on quite a good spot. It's all right. They all think about that. It's like tucked away. Looks like a hotel. 
Yeah. So it's going from that to that. She. The world is How many bedrooms is that left? How many bedrooms? Extension connected internally. Uh, yes, I think it is. Just double check. Right, I'm going to get um, just the. Um, yeah, this is the existing ground floor plan. Okay, so that's what's there at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what's here at the moment on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. And that's what's proposed. Well, no, it isn't. It says, I don't think it is, because I thought that originally, but I think it might just be the phrasing that's used. They've got a new set of stairs. You can just get upstairs in there. Okay. If we agree, I think we ought to make it. And it's there. Yeah, it's in back in the music. It's there. There's two stairs there. Yeah. What, over there? Yeah. What they could do is, is where it's divided. And there's, right, a, sorry. there's two front doors. Yeah, so that is the new one there. There's two front doors. Yeah. Yeah, no. It could be turned into an HMO, could it? Yeah. Well, we had one in Hawkins Crescent, didn't we, recently? Yeah. The other kitchen. So, that would be the kitchen. The kitchen was there. So, at the moment, they've got a kitchen dining room, and they're going to make a separate dining room and an enormous kitchen. With another set of stairs. What's in the first floor? Um, that's, yeah, the... You've got two doors? Yeah, there is a door there, 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 and then there's a... What's it? What's it? Next up, what? Okay, we can do that on. So, we'll do the floor plan. Okay, that's what's there at the moment. So, there are... The bedrooms, I think it is there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Yeah, that's the ensuite bathroom. So, if you believe the same person. We're making one huge bedroom. Oh, um, look at that. No device, no, no access from the existing to the proposal on the first floor. Yeah. They're subdivided, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And opening block up. Yeah. So it's, but there, there, there are two separate rooms. Yeah. yeah. I, I think we uh, refute that personally. Well, I think if we. I think we should make a comment if we do agree yeah. to keep it with a condition but not be used as a set of Yeah, it should remain as one property. Yeah. Um, but I think over development and out keeping. Yeah. So you're objecting to that? Yeah. So Keith proposed it's over development, objections, uh, it's over development and out keeping. The, the dormer up, upstairs, I mean, that could potentially be turned into another room there, though. It's very good development and our uh, keeping. 
they don't need to put in an edit to be submitted if that piece of objection is in the case. Oh, keeping with a street scene? Yeah. yeah. Under the development of the okay. site. So Keith proposes that. All in favour of Keith's proposal? Who seconded it? Yeah. Um, Tom seconded it. Thank you. Sorry, Tom, are you still there? Sorry, it's Ed. Ed Hood seconded it. Ed seconded it. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh, however, we're going against it. Okay. Yeah. Are you against it as well, Tom? Yeah, 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 I'm against it. So that's, that's, uh, that's unanimous. Unanimous. Okay, move on. Yeah. Uh, stop that from me. Number eight. The erection of the single story site extension provided additional limited property to Manor Farm present. We have three to do within 10 minutes. Zoom to it. Uh, I have to pay confidence. Four applications due within 10 minutes. Right. Can we go back into the office now? Adam? Can we get coffee again? Um, not till COVID disappears on the 21st of June. That's what I thought you said. Carry <laughs> yeah. on, on, carry on. Right, right. Farm Wasn't there a council ruling of it was three hours? You got sandwiches? <laughs> oh, go on, Ed. So it's this property here. Yeah. yeah. So it's the single story side and front extension. And there's a quite a big one there as well. So it's this, kind of this one here. Mm -hmm. That one there. It's kind of just see the front of the bit. <coughs> but I can show you existing and proposed elevation. So that's what's there at the moment, and that's what they want to do. Oh, move it, sir. Yeah, let's move it. He's proposed it, and we'd like to second it. Do you think that's fine? Yeah. 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 Single story extension. Mm. It's on the side. Yeah, Michael is uh, seconded it. Sorry, Andy. And those in favour? One, two, three. Four. Against? Me, Tom. Two. Is that six in favour then for the end? Yeah. Okay, next one is uh, number nine. Erection of a single story rear and side extension form additional living Four. accommodation. Four. Twelve Shield Road. Yeah. Yeah. There. 
-hmm. So they're building where in conjunction with that? They're going to be behind that wall. Yeah, yeah. Up, to, up to the wall, isn't it? Yeah. Right. And then then think, behind. I think what we have to be mindful there, they may even try and use that wall um, and just put a second course of bricks. But I think what we must do is say that that wall must be retained or reinstated. Mm. Yeah. One of the wall it needs to check the foundation of that wall before they build on it. Um, the foundations may not be deep enough. Could that would that keep would that fall within building rate? Right? Well, that sort of yeah, thing I think so. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That wall would be part of the original planting scheme and the design of that estate. Yeah. There's lots of walls like that all round chill. But yeah, we must keep that. Uh, yeah. Ed, you know to say something, Ed? Well, I, I, I was just going to enforce that a bit further, is that if they try and encroach, how close to the wall can they go? So one would say is the measurement is that the workspace you would need to be on the other side, i.e. their side, to either rebuild the wall or repair it, should yeah. it need to be done. Now, that is, um, well, that's got to be at least three foot. I would have said so, yeah. I mean, normally you get party wall act stuff, but, you, you know, I mean, that wall there, um, it is part of the estate. So, you know, it's got to be crucial that whatever they do, if they damage it or take it down, they replace it like for like. Oh, is that on, we need to move on. We've got two more to do within five minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, are we going to agree that subject to that wall is retained? So, no yeah. subject to the retention of the wall. The exterior. Exterior. Mm. Mm. Oh, exterior boundary wall. Boundary wall, yeah. Boundary wall, okay. Okay, so um, yeah, who's that? I think Keith is it. Yeah, who's there? Who's second in it? I can. Uh, I think Ed got it. I hand. think Ed just got another. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank Move on, next one is the erection of the first floor rear extension form additional accommodation 59, 14, 13. That's not Stephen's house, is it? That's Stephen's Oh, pardon me. Need coffee yet? I need a good cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so do I. If you hadn't been worried about Aldi, you might have said it's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this, <laughs> no, is it? This house here. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the third floor rear extension. So, I can Drawing, but it's a bit not good here. So that's what's here at the moment. Okay, so that piece of sort of thing there. So it looks like a dark. But um, this one looks odd. They could put that on the front. No. Uh, no, no, it's a flat roof extension. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. That does look horrible. Yeah, yeah. overkeeping. 
I've never seen anything like that before. It's yeah. not like a dome put on there. It's not. It's not a Phillips window. It looks like a dome thing. Yeah, it's it's like orange or light thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it has to be with after keeping with what's around the area. Yeah. Uh, and also it's the flag drop. You need your sort of say that the flag drop is. Yeah. Not a table of flag drops. You would like to propose that as an objection. Who's proposing it? Yeah, um, what? <laughs> Keith has proposed it. We object to this one. Somebody would like to second it? Second the objection? Yeah, I'll go there. Thank you. Well, uh, well done, Ed. So, those in favour of the objection? Yep. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Marvellous. Move on to the next one then, which is the last and final one. We've yeah. got two minutes. And then the erection of a single story rear extension, which would extend beyond the rear wall of the original house by five metres, for which the maximum height would be 3.9 metres, and for which the height of these would be 3 metres, 10 km wide. Yeah. Under the new, well, under what was new, I mean, it's, it's now accepted, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come yeah. out. Come yeah. out on the meters, though, is it? I it's, thought it was four. It's this one in the middle of the act. There's that one in the middle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to cut the garden off. Yeah. <laughs> a plum hidden behind the tree. <laughs> That's my bit. I did the This is what used to be called an outline plan. Yeah, so it's that what it is. It would certainly go in the site, but you know, it's what does this roof elevation look like? There aren't because it's the prior education, so they don't have to um, what double the prior education. Yeah, they don't have to provide all the. Right. Huge so they get the permission and then put the house on the market. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right, yeah. It's no further out than the conservatory next door, if I look at it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look about the same. Yeah, that's slightly more. Slightly bigger. It is bigger. They're pushing it, but yeah, I, th I think probably they'll do what I said. So, what, what's the... Um, uh, uh, who's Any the objections from anybody? No, nothing. <clears throat> I think it will be our push to, you know... Yeah. Okay. Who would like to propose it? No objection. Okay. <laughs> so, Ed, would you like to propose this? Yeah, go on, I'll put a point to it. Okay, the similar to what was formerly called out on time. Yeah, go on then. I'll second. Please second it. So those in favour? Okay. Those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against? Abstentions? One. I think Kit, uh, Tom, were you again? Uh, against, yeah. Okay, okay sorry. I'm one against, against. and one abstention. Cool. Right, this what is it, agree the next weekend, is it? Well, we're, we're almost done. So, there you go, there's nothing else on the agenda. So, what my suggestion is, in light of the email which I sent out to everybody earlier on about having to have the annual town council meeting on the 26th of May, I suggest that all planning applications or any planning applications are discussed at the full council meeting and then the first proper meeting of the new planning committee will be on the 23rd of June because you're not going to know who's on the planning committee if the meeting where you're setting the committee is on the same night as the planning committee next. Me. Yeah, yeah. That would be better. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Actually, yeah. it would be the 23rd of June. Thank you. I formally close this meeting at 10 o'clock.
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, all. Good night. Have a good week, all. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night.